Welcome to today's video, where we'll explore the darker side of fairies. Often depicted as whimsical and benevolent, fairies have a much more sinister history than most people realize. In folklore, these creatures weren't always the friendly, glittering beings we see in modern tales, they were mischievous, dangerous, and even vengeful. From tales of fairy kidnappings to the eerie enchantments they cast, today we'll uncover why fairies have earned their reputation as more than just magical creatures. Join us as we delve into the myths, legends, and hidden truths about these mysterious beings. Origins in Ancient Beliefs Christian Influence The evolution of fairy lore through the lens of Christianity is a fascinating intersection of faith, mythology, and cultural reinterpretation. Fairies, often seen as mysterious beings with ambiguous morality in pre-Christian traditions, underwent a significant transformation as Christianity spread across Europe. This shift was marked by a theological and cultural reframing that aligned these entities with the Christian dichotomy of good and evil. By examining how fairies were equated with fallen angels or demonic entities, we can better understand the changes in their portrayal, the reasons behind these changes, and their broader cultural impact. The Pre-Christian Fairy Tradition Before the advent of Christianity, fairies held a multifaceted role in the folklore of various cultures, particularly in Celtic, Norse, and other pre-Christian traditions across Europe. These beings were neither inherently good nor evil, but occupied a liminal space between the natural and supernatural realms. They were often associated with nature, fertility, and the mysteries of the earth, believed to dwell in forests, rivers, and hills, or even in an unseen parallel world. Fairies were also known by a variety of names, side in Irish folklore, Elfar in Norse mythology, and Fae in French traditions. Their behavior varied widely, they could be helpful or harmful, generous or vindictive, depending on their disposition and how they were treated by humans. Offerings, respect, and adherence to certain rituals were common ways to maintain harmonious relations with these beings. The Christianization of Europe The rise of Christianity brought profound changes to European societies, including their mythologies and folk beliefs. The new monotheistic worldview clashed with the polytheistic and animistic traditions of earlier cultures. As Christian missionaries sought to convert pagan populations, they reinterpreted indigenous beliefs to align with Christian doctrine. This process involved demonizing certain practices and beings that were central to pre-Christian religions. The Christian theological framework divided all supernatural beings into two clear categories, divine beings, angels and saints, and malevolent entities, demons and fallen angels. Fairies, with their ambiguous moral standing and association with pagan rituals, did not fit neatly into this binary system. Over time, they were often relegated to the latter category, being equated with demons or fallen angels. Fairies as fallen angels One of the most enduring reinterpretations was the idea that fairies were fallen angels. This belief drew on the Christian narrative of the rebellion in heaven, where Lucifer and his followers were cast out for defying God. Some Christian folklore suggested that fairies were those angels who neither sided with Lucifer nor remained loyal to God. When the rebellious angels were expelled, these neutral beings were left to inhabit the earth, residing in liminal spaces like woods, caves, or underground realms. This view allowed fairies to retain their otherworldly nature while aligning them with Christian cosmology. As fallen angels, they were seen as beings of diminished power, separated from divine grace, but not entirely damned. This explanation also preserved some of their morally ambiguous characteristics, as they were not wholly evil like demons, but were still considered suspect and untrustworthy. Fairies as demonic entities a more sinister interpretation emerged as Christian authorities sought to eradicate pagan practices and beliefs. In this context, fairies were increasingly associated with demons, the servants of Satan. This association was particularly prominent during the Middle Ages, a time when the church was vigilant against heresy, 
witchcraft, and any perceived threats to its authority. Medieval texts often warned against interactions with fairies, suggesting that they were demonic tempters leading humans astray. Stories of humans entering fairy rings, visiting fairy realms, or receiving gifts from fairies were reinterpreted as dangerous encounters with malevolent forces. The church emphasized that such interactions could imperil one soul, framing fairies as agents of the devil who lured people away from God. This demonization extended to fairy-related folklore practices. Offering food, gifts, or prayers to fairies, once a common way to secure their favor, was condemned as idolatrous and akin to witchcraft. Over time, this contributed to the decline of fairy veneration and the stigmatization of those who maintained such beliefs. The Role of Fairies in Witchcraft Trials The link between fairies and demonic forces was further solidified during the witchcraft trials of the early modern period, 15th to 18th centuries. Accusations of witchcraft often included claims of consorting with fairies, who were depicted as demonic familiars or emissaries of the devil. This connection reinforced the idea that fairies were not benign beings but active participants in satanic plots. For example, in Scotland and Ireland, where belief in fairies remained strong, accused witches frequently confessed under duress to receiving powers or instructions from the fairy folk. These confessions were often interpreted as evidence of demonic pacts, illustrating how deeply intertwined fairy law and Christian demonology had become. Cultural Persistence and Adaptation Despite the church's efforts to demonize fairies, belief in their existence persisted in popular culture. Rural communities, in particular, continued to tell stories of fairies, often blending older pagan traditions with Christian elements. For example, fairies were sometimes described as spirits of the dead, a concept that resonated with Christian Over time, fairy lore adapted to reflect changing societal attitudes. By the 19th century, during the Romantic movement, fairies were reimagined as whimsical and ethereal beings, stripped of their darker associations. This transformation was influenced by a growing nostalgia for the pre-industrial past and a fascination with folklore as a cultural artifact. However, traces of their earlier characterization as fallen angels or demonic entities remained in certain traditions and literary works. The Christian influence on fairy lore profoundly altered their portrayal, shifting them from nature spirits and liminal beings to fallen angels or demonic entities. This transformation was driven by the need to align pagan beliefs with Christian doctrine and to discourage practices associated with pre-Christian traditions. While the demonization of fairies reflected the church's broader efforts to establish religious orthodoxy, it also highlighted the resilience of folk traditions, which continued to evolve in response to changing cultural and religious contexts. Ultimately, the interplay between Christianity and fairy lore illustrates the dynamic nature of myth and belief. Fairies, as enduring symbols of the mysterious and the otherworldly, continue to captivate the imagination, bridging the gap between ancient traditions and contemporary interpretations. Ambiguous morality Fairy folklore is replete with cautionary tales about the consequences of offending these otherworldly beings. Across cultures, fairies are often depicted as capricious entities who expect humans to adhere to specific rules of respect and reciprocity. Offenses such as neglecting offerings, intruding on their land, or disregarding their customs were believed to provoke their wrath. The repercussions of such actions could range from curses and misfortunes to abductions and even death. This article explores the recurring themes in these cautionary tales, their cultural significance, and what they reveal about humanity's historical relationship with the unseen world. Fairies and Reciprocity, the importance of offerings. In many traditions, offerings were a crucial way to maintain harmony with fairies. These gifts often consisted of food, milk, or coins left at fairy mounds, wells, or other sacred sites. The practice symbolized respect and an acknowledgement of the fairies' presence and influence over human affairs. However, failing to provide offerings, or worse, removing them, 
was considered a grave insult. Neglecting offerings One well-known tale comes from Irish folklore, which often emphasizes the importance of leaving milk or bread out for the side, fairies. A farmer who decided to withhold his nightly offering to the fairies found his cows unable to produce milk, his crops failing, and his family falling ill. Desperate to reverse his misfortunes, he resumed the practice, and only then did his life return to normal. This story illustrates the idea that fairies held sway over human prosperity and could punish those who ignored their customs. Such tales reinforce the communal practice of leaving offerings, creating a shared sense of respect for the unseen forces believed to govern the natural world. Trespassing on Fairy Land Fairy realms were often thought to overlap with human spaces, but were marked by distinct boundaries, such as fairy rings, mounds, or sacred trees. Intruding on these spaces was viewed as a direct affront to the fairies. The Curse of Fairy Rings Fairy rings, naturally occurring circles of mushrooms, were considered sacred spaces where fairies danced. Entering a fairy ring was believed to disrupt their revelry and invite severe consequences. Many stories warn that those who trespassed into a ring were cursed with bad luck, illness, or madness. For instance, one legend from Wales tells of a young shepherd who, curious about a fairy ring, stepped into it during the full moon. He became entranced by the music of the fairies and danced with them until dawn. When he finally emerged, he discovered that years had passed in the mortal world, though to him, it had seemed like only a single night. His family had aged or passed away, and he lived the rest of his life as a broken, disoriented man. This tale reflects the theme of time distortion in fairy lore, symbolizing the alien and perilous nature of fairy realms. It also serves as a caution against curiosity that oversteps boundaries. The Cutting of Sacred Trees Another common offense involved cutting down trees associated with fairies, particularly lone hawthorns or oaks standing in the middle of fields. These trees were often considered fairy homes or gateways to their world. Cutting them down was thought to bring devastating consequences. One famous example is the Fairy Tree of Latoon in County Clare, Ireland. When plans for a road threatened to remove this ancient hawthorn, locals protested, fearing the wrath of the fairies. Folklore held that disturbing the tree would bring misfortune to anyone involved. Indeed, those who ignored such warnings often met with accidents, financial ruin, or other forms of bad luck in the stories. Fairy abductions, kidnappings and changelings. One of the most feared consequences of offending fairies was abduction. Fairies were believed to steal humans, often children or young brides, and take them to their realm. These kidnappings were thought to occur when humans failed to respect fairy customs or inadvertently provoked them. The Story of Tam Lin A famous ballad from Scottish folklore, Tam Lin, tells of a young knight abducted by the Queen of the Fairies after trespassing in her woods. The story portrays the fairies as powerful yet morally ambiguous beings who hold Tam Lin captive, forcing him to serve them. Though he is eventually rescued by his lover, Janet, the tale underscores the dangers of crossing paths with fairies and the high stakes involved in interactions with them. Changelings and Swap Children Changelings, fairy substitutes left in place of abducted human children, are another recurring motif. Offending fairies, whether by neglecting offerings or showing disrespect, was believed to provoke them into such retaliatory acts. One chilling story from Irish folklore tells of a mother who, after failing to leave milk out for the fairies, discovered her infant replaced by a sickly, unrecognizable creature. Desperate, she sought the advice of a wise woman who instructed her to perform a series of dangerous rituals to force the fairies to return her child. Though her child was eventually restored, the ordeal left a lasting scar on the family, serving as a dire warning to others. Death as a consequence In some cases, offending fairies could lead to death. 
This ultimate punishment was often reserved for those who showed extreme disrespect, such as desecrating fairy dwellings or mocking their existence. The Piper of Ardglass A story from Irish folklore tells of a piper who, while traveling at night, stumbled upon a fairy mound and began playing music. The fairies, angered by his audacity, lured him into their realm, where he played for them endlessly. Though his music pleased the fairies, he eventually succumbed to exhaustion and died. His body was later found near the mound, with his pipe still clutched in his hands. This tale serves as a reminder of the fine line between entertaining fairies and offending them, as well as the potentially fatal consequences of failing to recognize that line. Cultural Significance of These Tales the stories of people offending fairies reflect deep-seated human anxieties about the unknown and the supernatural. They also emphasize the importance of respecting nature and communal traditions. In pre-modern societies, such tales served multiple purposes. Reinforcing social norms, by warning against certain behaviors, these stories encouraged adherence to community practices, such as leaving offerings or avoiding sacred spaces. Explaining misfortune, in an unpredictable world, tales of fairy curses provided a way to make sense of misfortunes like illness, crop failure, or sudden death. Respecting the environment, many of the offenses described, such as cutting down sacred trees or intruding on fairy land, align with practices that would harm the environment. These stories implicitly advocated for stewardship of the natural world. Tales of offending fairies and the dire consequences that followed serve as timeless reminders of humanity's relationship with the unseen. Whether through curses, abductions, or death, these stories reflect a belief in the importance of respect, reciprocity, and caution when dealing with forces beyond human understanding. Even today, the enduring appeal of these cautionary tales reveals their power to captivate the imagination and to remind us of the delicate balance between our world and the mysterious realms that folklore suggests lie just beyond our reach. The Fear of the Unknown Fairies have captivated human imagination for centuries, embodying both the awe and fear of untamed nature and the mysteries that lie beyond human comprehension. These mythical beings are deeply rooted in folklore and have been shaped by cultural, environmental, and psychological influences. They often serve as symbols of liminality, thriving in spaces where the ordinary and extraordinary meet, and where human control over the environment or reality weakens. In this discussion, we'll explore how fairies reflect human fears of nature and the unknown, their connection to liminal spaces, and the psychological and cultural factors that have shaped these associations. The Fear of Untamed Nature Nature has always held a dual role in human life, it sustains, but it also challenges and threatens. In earlier times, when humanity was more directly dependent on the land and its resources, the natural world could be a source of both life and death. This ambivalence often gave rise to a perception of nature as something both revered and feared. Fairies, as beings intimately tied to nature, embody this duality. They are often depicted as guardians of natural spaces, forests, rivers, meadows, imbuing these places with a sense of otherworldly power. In many traditions, fairies are protective of their environments, punishing those who exploit or desecrate them. For example, tales from Celtic folklore warn against cutting down sacred trees or disturbing fairy mounds. Such stories likely served as cautionary tales, emphasizing the need to respect the natural world. However, they also reflect a deeper fear that nature, when angered or disturbed, could retaliate in ways beyond human control. Fairies, as agents of this retribution, represent the unpredictable and sometimes hostile aspects of the wild. This fear is compounded by the untamed nature of the spaces fairies inhabit. Dense forests, with their labyrinthine paths and eerie silence, can easily unsettle even the most rational mind. Similarly, caves and mountains often carry a sense of foreboding, as they conceal what lies beyond sight. 
By associating fairies with these environments, folklore externalizes humanity's anxieties about the dangers of venturing into the unknown. The concept of liminal spaces. Fairies are often tied to liminal spaces, those transitional zones where boundaries blur. These can be physical locations, such as the edge of a forest, the entrance to a cave, or a crossroads, as well as temporal moments like dusk, dawn, or the changing of seasons. Liminal spaces are inherently unsettling because they defy categorization, they are neither fully one thing nor another. For example, crossroads have long been associated with fairies and other supernatural beings. In many cultures, they are seen as places of power and uncertainty, where decisions must be made and paths diverge. This symbolism aligns with the idea of fairies as creatures that dwell in the in-between, mediating between the human and natural worlds. Similarly, fairies are often depicted as being active during liminal times. Samhain, the Celtic festival marking the transition from autumn to winter, is a time when the boundary between the human world and the fairy realm is believed to weaken. This temporal liminality allows fairies to cross into human spaces, heightening both their allure and their danger. The connection to liminality underscores the psychological roots of fairy folklore. Humans are often uncomfortable with ambiguity, seeking to impose order on the chaotic and unknown. By associating fairies with these uncertain spaces, folklore externalizes the unease that arises when the familiar rules of reality no longer apply. Fairies as agents of the unknown. One of the most enduring aspects of fairy folklore is its emphasis on the mysterious and unknowable. Fairies are often portrayed as capricious beings whose motives are inscrutable to humans. They may offer help or bring harm, often without clear reason. This unpredictability mirrors humanity's fear of the unknown, especially in an era when natural phenomena were poorly understood. For instance, sudden illnesses or unexplained misfortunes were often attributed to fairy interference. In medieval Europe, the belief in changelings, fairy children left in place of human infants, provided a supernatural explanation for developmental disorders or infant mortality. These beliefs offered a way to make sense of the inexplicable, even as they reinforced the fear of forces beyond human understanding. This fear is amplified by the moral ambiguity often associated with fairies. Unlike the clear-cut dichotomy of good and evil found in some other mythical traditions, fairies occupy a more complex space. They can be benevolent or malevolent, often depending on how they are treated by humans. This moral fluidity adds to their mystique, making them both fascinating and frightening. Cultural and Psychological Roots The representation of fairies as embodiments of fear and fascination can be traced to both cultural and psychological factors. On a cultural level, fairy folklore reflects humanity's relationship with the natural world. In agrarian societies, where survival depended on understanding and respecting the environment, fairies served as a way to personify natural forces. By attributing human-like qualities to these forces, people could engage with them on a symbolic level, creating rituals and taboos to navigate their relationship with the wild. Psychologically, fairies tap into the human propensity for anthropomorphism, the tendency to attribute human characteristics to non-human entities. This helps make sense of a world that can often feel chaotic and impersonal. By imagining fairies as guardians or tricksters, people could project their fears and hopes onto these mythical beings, creating narratives that offered both warnings and comfort. Moreover, the fairy's role as a liminal figure resonates with deep-seated psychological themes. Liminality is not just a feature of physical or temporal spaces, it also reflects internal states of transition and uncertainty. Adolescence, for example, is a liminal stage between childhood and adulthood, often marked by exploration and rebellion. Fairies, with their association with change and unpredictability, mirror these internal experiences, making them particularly compelling figures in folklore. Fairies in modern contexts 
While the traditional fear of fairies may have diminished in modern times, their symbolic resonance endures. In contemporary literature, film, and art, fairies often serve as metaphors for the untamed and the unknown. They continue to be associated with nature, but their depiction has evolved to reflect changing cultural attitudes. Where earlier portrayals emphasized their danger, modern interpretations often highlight their beauty and fragility, reflecting a growing awareness of environmental conservation. At the same time, the fascination with fairies as liminal beings persists. They remain popular figures in fantasy fiction, often inhabiting realms that blur the boundaries between reality and imagination. This reflects an ongoing human desire to explore the unknown, even as technological and scientific advances have demystified much of the natural world. Fairies embody the fear of untamed nature and the unknown, serving as both protectors and antagonists in the human imagination. Their association with liminal spaces highlights the unease that arises when boundaries blur and the familiar gives way to the extraordinary. Through their unpredictable and morally ambiguous behavior, fairies externalize humanity's anxieties about the chaotic and uncontrollable aspects of existence. At their core, fairies reflect a deep and enduring tension in the human psyche, the desire to explore and understand the unknown, coupled with the fear of what lies beyond our grasp. By examining their role in folklore and culture, we gain insight into not only our relationship with nature but also the complexities of our own fears and desires. Even in an age of reason, the allure of fairies as symbols of mystery and liminality continues to captivate and challenge us. Abduction and Changelings The myths surrounding fairies are replete with tales of abduction and changelings, two concepts that are deeply entwined with human fears of the unknown, loss, and the mysterious forces that might influence their lives. In folklore, fairies are often depicted as malevolent beings who steal children, leaving behind substitutes, changelings. These stories, which can be traced across various cultures, serve as both warnings and explanations for the unexplained phenomena in daily life, particularly around childhood illness, developmental disabilities, and death. The concept of abduction and changelings presents a fascinating intersection of folklore, psychological fears, and social dynamics, and understanding these themes can shed light on how societies cope with the complexities of life, loss, and the supernatural. The nature of abduction and changelings in folklore. Abduction by fairies, often referred to as fairy kidnapping, is a recurring theme in European folklore. Fairies, particularly in Celtic traditions, are known to abduct humans, especially children, and sometimes even adults. The most commonly told fairy abduction stories center around the idea of changelings, fairy children left in place of human babies or toddlers. These stories were especially prevalent in medieval and early modern Europe, with particular intensity in regions such as Ireland, Scotland, and Scandinavia. While the specifics vary from culture to culture, the central concept remains the same, fairies swap their own offspring for human children, often as part of their mysterious and capricious dealings. The changeling mythos generally includes a number of core elements. Abduction, fairies abduct children, often in the dead of night, taking them away to their hidden or enchanted realms. Replacement, in place of the stolen child, the fairies leave behind a creature that appears human but is in some way wrong or abnormal. The changeling's strange behavior, the changeling child is often described as exhibiting unusual, unnatural behavior, which may include signs of illness, strange moods, or even aging prematurely. Attempts to reveal the truth, parents, believing that their child has been replaced, attempt various methods to reveal the changeling's true nature, such as exposing the child to fire, placing them in water, or testing their intelligence or behavior. This framework of abduction and replacement plays on the fear of losing a loved one to an incomprehensible force. In this way, fairy abductions and changelings reflect an anxiety over the fragility of human life and the unknown causes behind illness or abnormal development. The Psychological Underpinnings of the Changelings Myth 
The changeling myth is deeply rooted in human psychology, particularly in the desire to explain and make sense of tragic or unexplained events. Historically, when a child became ill, was born with a disability, or showed abnormal behavior, it was often beyond the parent's understanding. In times before the advancements in medical science, conditions such as developmental disorders, autism, or even mental illness could lead to the belief that a child had been taken by fairies and replaced with a changeling. Parents and caregivers, in the face of such unexplained changes, would naturally search for answers, and the changeling myth provided a supernatural explanation. It allowed them to attribute their child's suffering to external forces rather than confronting the terrifying reality of an unknown medical condition. In a time when disease and developmental disorders were poorly understood, this myth became an answer to the fear of the unknown, of illness, of death, and of the possibility that something beyond their control could take their child away. The changeling myth also connects to broader fears of possession and transformation. In folklore, the idea of a changeling is more than just a substitution of children, it represents a deeper existential anxiety about the identity and the nature of the self. The changeling, though outwardly human, is not truly human, which plays into the fear that one could lose one's sense of self or one's loved one to a force outside their control. The creature left behind by the fairies is often portrayed as a distorted version of the human child, symbolizing the alienation that parents might feel when their child exhibits abnormal behavior. The Role of Fairies in the Myth Fairies, as creatures of both beauty and danger, are central to the mythology of abduction and changelings. Often portrayed as capricious and unpredictable, fairies in folklore are depicted as beings that exist on the edges of human understanding. They are not inherently malevolent, but are typically indifferent to human suffering. They may steal a child because they desire the human infant for reasons that are not always clear, sometimes to replace their own sick or dying offspring, sometimes as part of a ritual or just out of mischief. This dual nature of fairies, both benevolent and malevolent, adds complexity to the changeling myth. In some stories, the fairies are portrayed as being capable of returning the abducted child if proper rituals or bargains are struck, while in others, the changeling is left to live out a distorted existence, neither fully human nor fully fairy. The changeling's behavior often differs from that of the human child in subtle but significant ways, such as displaying exceptional intelligence or physical ability or, conversely, becoming lethargic, sickly, or emotionally distant. This abnormality serves as the clue to the parents that something is amiss. The fear surrounding changelings and abductions may have been compounded by the societal fear of infertility and the need for children in agrarian communities. Infants were essential for labor, lineage, and the continuation of family legacy. A missing child or a changeling represented not just personal loss, but also a threat to the stability of the family unit. In such contexts, the changeling myth became a way of explaining and coping with the potential loss of a child and the societal implications that followed. Social and Cultural Contexts of Changelings The belief in changelings was not just a matter of personal anxiety but also a reflection of cultural and social values. In medieval and early modern Europe, community life was often governed by a strong sense of shared customs and beliefs. Many communities had strict social hierarchies and deviations from the norm, whether in behavior, appearance, or even belief, were met with suspicion and fear. When a child was marked by illness or disability, it was not always viewed with compassion as modern social values might dictate. Instead, it could be seen as a sign of a supernatural problem that needed to be addressed. In some communities, the belief in changelings was so strong that it led to accusations of witchcraft or fairy abduction. Stories of children being recovered from the fairies' realm were sometimes used to justify acts of violence against those deemed to be a possessing the changeling child. Some mothers, for instance, faced intense pressure to rid their homes of these perceived supernatural forces. Unfortunately, this fear could result in tragic outcomes, 
as some children were subjected to dangerous rituals designed to force the fairy child to return to its realm or to restore the original human child. Moreover, the changeling myth is linked to the perception of the other in society. Those who were deemed outsiders, whether through differences in social class, ethnic background, or physical appearance, were sometimes viewed as more likely to be changelings or fairy beings. For instance, in Ireland and Scotland, children with physical disabilities or unusual behaviors were sometimes believed to be changelings. The belief also contributed to social stigma surrounding disability, as these children were often marginalized or treated with suspicion by their communities. The Decline of the Changelings Myth With the rise of scientific understanding and modern medicine, the changeling myth gradually lost its grip on popular consciousness. Medical explanations for developmental disorders, such as autism, cerebral palsy, and other conditions that were once mysterious, provided a more rational framework for understanding childhood illness. The influence of Christianity, which sought to banish superstition, also played a role in eradicating belief in fairies and changelings. Christianity viewed such beliefs as pagan and sought to replace them with the doctrines of salvation and divine intervention. However, despite the decline of belief in changelings in the modern era, the archetypes of fairy abduction and the changeling child have continued to persist in popular culture. The figure of the changeling still appears in literature, film, and art, often representing themes of alienation, identity loss, and the fear of the other. In modern storytelling, the changeling myth is often reinterpreted as a metaphor for the challenges of personal identity, the fears of abandonment, or the isolation felt by those who are perceived as different. The myths of abduction and changelings are a powerful reflection of human anxieties about the unknown. These tales of fairy kidnappings and swap children were ways to make sense of the mysteries of childhood illness, developmental disorders, and the deep emotional pain that comes with the loss of a child. By externalizing these fears into stories of supernatural forces and strange, capricious beings, these myths provided explanations for the unexplainable and a framework for confronting the psychological realities of life, death, and change. While belief in changelings has largely faded with the advancement of science, the myth persists in our cultural consciousness, resonating with themes of transformation, identity, and the ever-present fear of what lies beyond our understanding. The Unseelie Court The Unseelie Court is a central concept in Scottish folklore, often considered the opposite of the Seelai Court, which represents benevolent or benign fairies. The Unseelie Court is infamous for its darker nature, frequently associated with malicious or harmful behavior toward humans. These fairies, who dwell in the hidden realms of nature, are an embodiment of chaos, and their mischievousness or cruelty is a defining characteristic in various tales and legends. Origins and Meaning The term Unseelie comes from the Scots language, where Seelia means blessed or happy, and Unseelie translates to unblessed or unfortunate. The Unseelie court, therefore, is often referred to as the unblessed court, a group of fairies whose intentions are far from kind. In many tales, the Unseelie court is depicted as a collection of dark or malevolent spirits, often contrasted with the Seelie court, which, while still powerful, are more inclined to help mortals or act in a neutral manner. The notion of the Unseelie Court was born out of the belief in a complex fairy hierarchy within Scottish myth and folklore. These fairy groups were believed to exist in a parallel world to humans, with their own societies, laws, and interactions with the natural world. Much of the folklore surrounding the Unseelie Court is drawn from old Scottish traditions, and these fairies were thought to roam the Scottish Highlands, often operating in the shadows of human settlements unseen by mortal eyes. The Nature of the Unseelie Court Unlike the Seelai Court, which includes fairies that are generally seen as mischievous but not outright evil, the Unseelie Court consists of those who deliberately bring harm or chaos. While members of the Seelai Court might trick or play pranks on humans, the Unseelie Court's pranks are often dangerous, deadly, or cruel. 
In some stories, the unseelie court is composed of dark fae who are linked to the supernatural world of death, disease, and destruction. These spirits may cause sickness, accidents, and even death, either for fun or as a form of punishment. They have been known to harm travelers, leading them astray, or causing them to lose their way in the wilderness, leaving them vulnerable to the elements or wild beasts. It's said that those who wander into the domains of the unseely court might never return, or return changed, their minds broken or their bodies harmed. The unseely court is also associated with the winter and the night. As the embodiment of cold, darkness, and despair, they are often active during the darker months, when the days are short, and the long nights rain. This connection to the winter season plays into their overall atmosphere of fear and malevolence. Many stories tell of the Unseely Queen, a powerful entity who rules the court with cruel and iron-handed authority, or of lesser dark fae under her command, who spread mischief and malice at her behest. Unseely Court Members while the members of the Unseely Court are not universally defined across all folklore, there are several types of fairy creatures and spirits commonly attributed to their ranks. These creatures are often malevolent, manipulative, and filled with a hatred of humankind. The Lenan Side The Lenan Side is a type of fairy that often appears in Scottish folklore, though it is sometimes included in the darker fairy circles, such as the Unseely Court. She is a seductress, a beautiful yet dangerous fairy who lures men to their deaths by draining their life force. She often appears as an alluring muse to poets or artists, who find themselves inspired to creative greatness at first, but who ultimately fall into decline as the lean-and side saps their vitality. The Red Caps Another notorious member of the Unseely Court are the Red Caps. These creatures are often depicted as old men with wicked, blood-soaked hats, made so from the blood of their victims. Red caps are said to stalk travelers, especially those who venture near ruins or remote areas. They are relentless and bloodthirsty, and once they have killed a victim, they dye their hats red in a gruesome display of their power. The Banshee Although the Banshee is most often associated with Irish folklore, in some Scottish versions of the tale, she is considered a member of the Unseelie Court. A harbinger of death, the Banshee is a spectral woman who cries, wails, or sings mournfully to foretell the death of a loved one. While her presence in folklore is generally connected to the death of mortals, her inclusion in the Unseelie Court further emphasizes her role as a destructive, ominous figure. The Fairy Knight the Fairy Knight is another archetype often associated with the Unseelie Court. This being is typically a warrior or knight-like figure who rides on horseback, sometimes appearing as a dark, brooding, and ghostly figure in the night. The Fairy Knight often seeks out those who wander the forests or remote glens and leads them to their doom. The Knight's appearance is typically a precursor to bad omens, foretelling of death, battle, or disaster. The Slewer The Slewer are another terrifying race of fairies connected to the Unseelie Court. These fae are often depicted as dark, shadowy beings who come in vast flocks, swooping down upon unsuspecting victims. The Slewer are said to be souls of the restless dead or fallen angels who are drawn to places where there is suffering or despair. They are sometimes blamed for causing disease, famine, or other disasters, as they are believed to feed off the negative emotions and pain of the living. Characteristics and Behavior The Unseelie Court operates on the principle that nothing in the fairy world is purely good or evil, but instead is a mixture of both. While the Seelie Court is typically more neutral or occasionally helpful, the Unseelie Court is dangerous, even for those who are well versed in dealing with the fae world. These fairies are not bound by the same moral codes as humans. They view human suffering as little more than a source of amusement, and they can be cruel and vindictive when angered or when their territory is invaded. Their pranks can be lethal, such as causing a traveler to become lost, turning a harmless object into something cursed, or tricking a person into entering the underworld. In many tales, 
the unseelie court members possess an almost predatory instinct. Humans, in their view, are merely pawns to be toyed with or consumed. This predatory nature is reflected in their appearance, often described as grotesque, with sharp teeth or claws, misshapen bodies, or ominous eyes. A notable trait of the Unseely Court is its unpredictability. The fairies that belong to it are not bound by any apparent rules other than their desire to sow chaos or take revenge on humans. Some may be highly cunning, while others act on raw primal emotion or hatred. Interaction with humans According to various legends, the Unseely Court does not generally like to interact with humans unless it is to cause harm. Travelers who find themselves wandering too close to the realm of these dark fae often face dangerous consequences. The Unseelie Court is said to lure travelers into its world, either by creating illusions that lead them astray or by manipulating them into making fatal mistakes. Once lost, a person might be forced to serve the Dark Court, or worse, they could be trapped forever in the fairy realm. In some accounts, the Unseelie Court is associated with those creatures that kidnap children or make deals with humans, usually with harmful results. Bargaining with the Unseelie Court is rarely wise, as any agreement is typically twisted or broken once the fairy has achieved its goal. Once someone enters the domain of the Unseelie Court, they are said to have few chances of returning, as the Dark Fae rarely allow their captives to leave. The Legacy of the Unseelie Court in Modern Culture Though its roots are firmly planted in folklore, the Unseelie Court has endured as an important part of modern mythology. Its influence can be found in a range of modern media, including books, films, and television shows, where the Unseelie Court often represents a darker, more dangerous side of fey and fairy magic. In popular fantasy literature, for instance, the Unseelie Court is often portrayed as an organization or faction of supernatural beings with a sinister agenda. Many contemporary depictions of fairies incorporate elements from Scottish folklore, presenting a world where fairies, good or evil, live hidden from humans but still influence the mortal realm. In these stories, characters might have to make deals with or battle against the dark fairies of the Unseelie Court, often facing dire consequences for crossing them. Furthermore, the Unseelie Court has found its place in modern witchcraft and neo-paganism, where it is sometimes invoked as a symbol of chaos, transformation, or even revenge. While these modern interpretations may vary, they usually preserve the essence of the Unseelie Court as a force that operates outside the boundaries of human understanding, representing the darker aspects of nature, magic, and the unknown. The Unseelie Court stands as one of the most enduring and ominous figures in Scottish folklore. As a collection of dark, dangerous fairies, the court embodies the darker side of the Fey realm, where malice, chaos, and cruelty reign. Their unpredictable behavior, malevolent nature, and tendency to harm humans have made them a subject of fear and fascination throughout history. Even today, their legacy continues to inspire stories of caution and intrigue, as they remind us of the darker, hidden forces that may lie just beyond the edge of our understanding. The Wild Hunt The Wild Hunt is one of the most fascinating and terrifying legends in European folklore, a spectral procession often led by supernatural beings such as fairies, gods, spirits, or legendary hunters. Known for its eerie nature and association with death, destruction, and chaos, the Wild Hunt has left a profound mark on the collective imagination of many cultures. Its origins are somewhat obscure, but it remains a vivid part of the mythological landscape, particularly in Germanic, Norse, and Celtic traditions, with a particular prominence in British and Scandinavian folklore. The Wild Hunt is not merely a ghostly parade, it embodies a host of ominous themes such as fate, the boundary between life and death, and the untamed forces of nature. Origins and Evolution of the Wild Hunt The Wild Hunt has roots in pre-Christian Europe, where it was often associated with the sky god or the storm god. The imagery of the hunt varies, but it typically involves a group of riders, often with supernatural powers, 
riding through the skies or across the land, sweeping up the living or the dead in their wake. In its earliest forms, the hunt was tied to the winter solstice, the longest night of the year, when the boundaries between the living and the dead were believed to be especially thin. The concept of a wild or frenzied chase across the heavens or the earth is believed to have been influenced by ancient rites of the horned god, who was often depicted as a ruler of the wilds and a leader of the hunt. As the mythology evolved, the wild hunt began to be seen as a supernatural procession, led by a god or a spirit, and accompanied by a host of spirits, fairies, or other spectral figures. In Norse mythology, the figure leading the hunt was often Odin, the all-father god who, in his guise as the hunter or wandering god, was said to lead a band of warriors or spirits on their wild chase through the night sky. Odin was associated with the dead and the afterlife, and his wild hunt was thought to signal times of strife, death, and impending disaster. In other traditions, the hunt could be led by figures like the Kaliage, the Celtic goddess of winter and death, or Hearn the Hunter, a figure in English folklore said to haunt the forests of Windsor. As Christianity spread across Europe, the wild hunt retained much of its power and became incorporated into various local Christian beliefs. It was often reinterpreted as the hounds of hell, with demons or evil spirits riding in pursuit of lost souls. The procession was seen as an omen of death or misfortune, especially if it was heard or seen by mortals. The procession and its participants. The wild hunt is usually depicted as a spectral procession that is both a journey and a terrifying spectacle. The figures involved in the hunt are often a mixture of the living and the dead, and the participants can vary greatly depending on the regional folklore. The leader? The leader of the wild hunt is one of its most important aspects, and different cultures have different mythological figures fulfilling this role. Some of the most notable leaders include Odin, Wooden in Norse mythology, Odin is the most famous leader of the wild hunt. Riding his eight-legged horse Sleipner, Odin leads a horde of warriors, spirits, and animals across the skies. The hunt is often seen as an omen of war or death, especially during times of social upheaval. In some versions of the myth, the hunt is said to be particularly active during the winter months, a time associated with the death of the old year and the coming of the new. The Kaliach, in Scottish and Irish folklore, the Kaliach is a goddess associated with winter, storms, and death. She is often portrayed as an old woman, sometimes riding a chariot or accompanied by a pack of spectral hounds. The Kaliach's wild hunt is a harbinger of winter's fierce grip and the end of the growing season. She is a figure of transformation and renewal, as her death and rebirth mark the changing seasons. Hearn the Hunter, in English folklore, Hearn the Hunter is a legendary figure associated with the forests of Windsor. Often depicted as a spectral huntsman with antlers growing from his head, Hearn is said to lead the wild hunt across the landscape. His hunt is associated with the death of the old year and the coming of new life in spring, as well as the cyclical nature of life and death. King Arthur, in some Welsh and Breton versions of the legend, King Arthur is said to lead the wild hunt, either in pursuit of lost souls or to protect the realm from evil forces. In these tales, the once and future king appears as a ghostly figure, whose return is eagerly awaited during times of crisis. The Huntsman and Spirits Accompanying the leader of the wild hunt are the huntsmen, who are often depicted as ghosts, fallen warriors, or spirits of the dead. These riders are often seen as souls in torment, bound to the hunter's punishment for their actions in life or as spirits unable to find peace. The huntsmen may ride spectral horses or be accompanied by a pack of ghostly hounds. The hounds themselves are often described as large, black, and supernatural, sometimes with glowing eyes or an eerie howl. These hounds are believed to be part of the wild hunt's entourage, either chasing or driving forward the spirits of the dead or the living. In some versions of the legend, the wild hunt is said to be a procession of lost souls, with the figures of the dead leading the charge, or it may include fairies, wraiths, and other supernatural beings. 
the hunt members are often described as a chaotic and frenzied assembly, a mix of ancient spirits, gods, and creatures, all united in a singular goal or purpose. The hounds and the horses. The hounds that accompany the wild hunt are significant in many versions of the legend. These spectral dogs are often described as huge and terrifying, their eyes glowing in the darkness, their howls carrying on the wind. They are said to be relentless in their pursuit, never tiring and unyielding in their chase. The horses of the hunt are equally important, often described as black, wild, or spectral, with a fearsome appearance. In many versions of the myth, the horses are said to ride across the sky, appearing to gallop through the air, their hooves thundering like storm clouds. The hunt itself is often a chaotic and wild pursuit, a symbol of untamed forces of nature and the inevitable passage of time. The appearance of the hunt is considered an omen, often signaling a time of death or catastrophe. It is said that those who hear the hunt or see it pass by should be cautious, as it is a harbinger of doom or misfortune. The Wild Hunt Symbolism the wild hunt carries profound symbolism, especially when viewed through the lens of mythology and human psychology. It is often seen as a representation of several key concepts. Death and the afterlife. The wild hunt is frequently associated with death, either as a direct harbinger or as part of the transition from life to death. In many cultures, the hunt is believed to be a procession of spirits, either those who have already passed or those who are on the verge of passing into the afterlife. In this way, the hunt embodies the fear and inevitability of death, as well as the journey that souls must undertake to the realm of the dead. The idea of riders coming to claim the souls of the dead is central to the wild hunt in many legends. The hunt is sometimes described as a kind of collective procession, sweeping up the souls of the recently deceased and guiding them to their final resting places. In other cases, the hunt is a symbol of punishment for those who have lived dishonorable lives, with their souls condemned to ride in the hunt for eternity. Fate and Destiny The wild hunt can also be seen as a manifestation of fate or destiny. The hunters, guided by a supernatural force, chase their prey without mercy, and their pursuit often ends in the victim's downfall or death. This relentless hunt may symbolize the inevitable nature of fate, suggesting that no matter how much humans try to resist or outrun it, death and destiny will always catch up with them. In some versions of the legend, those who encounter the wild hunt are swept away, forced to join the procession as unwilling participants. This emphasizes the idea of inescapability, once the hunt begins, there is no stopping it, and no one can escape its path. The Cycle of Life and Death The wild hunt is often depicted as a cyclical event, tied to the natural cycle of life and death. This cyclical nature suggests that the wild hunt is part of a larger cosmic order, one that governs both the heavens and the earth. As a reflection of the changing seasons, the hunt may represent the end of life in winter and the rebirth of life in spring, as well as the broader pattern of decay and renewal in nature. The presence of figures like the Kaliage, Hearn, or Odin further ties the hunt to the changing of the seasons, marking the end of one era and the beginning of another. The wild hunt embodies the unstoppable passage of time, the coming of death, and the hope for renewal. The wild hunt in modern culture in modern times, the wild hunt has maintained its presence in folklore, literature, and pop culture. The imagery of ghostly riders, spectral hounds, and the fearsome leader continues to captivate audiences. It has influenced works in fantasy literature, gothic horror, and video games, where the hunt often appears as a symbol of terror, fate, or death. In literature, authors like J.R.R. Tolkien, Robert E. E. Howard, and H.P. Lovecraft have incorporated elements of the wild hunt into their worlds, often using it to symbolize the forces of darkness, fate, or the supernatural. In fantasy settings, the wild hunt is often a force of chaos or destruction, an unstoppable power that can sweep away entire civilizations or bring about personal transformation. Additionally, the wild hunt has found its way into modern pagan and neo-pagan rituals, 
where it is sometimes invoked as a symbol of the darker, more mysterious aspects of the spiritual journey. The Wicca tradition, as well as other forms of contemporary witchcraft, have adopted aspects of the wild hunt, using its imagery to represent the power of the natural world, the spirits of the dead, and the ever-turning wheel of life and death. The Wild Hunt is a spectral and terrifying legend that continues to haunt the imaginations of those who encounter it. As a symbol of death, fate, and the forces of nature, it embodies the chaos of existence and the inevitability of death. Whether led by gods, fairies, or spirits, the Wild Hunt is a reminder of the thin boundary between life and death and the cyclical nature of the world. In its various forms, it continues to capture the imagination, reminding us of the power of myth and the unknown forces that shape our lives. Lenan Side The Lenan Side, pronounced Lenan Shi, is a haunting and tragic figure in Celtic mythology, particularly in Irish and Scottish folklore. Often described as a vampiric fairy or muse, the Lenan Side is known for her captivating beauty and her dangerous, life-draining nature. She is a seductive spirit who lures men, particularly artists and poets, into her grasp, offering them inspiration and creative brilliance, but at the cost of their vitality and ultimately, their life force. The tale of the Lenan side is one of complex beauty and horror, blending themes of love, obsession, sacrifice, and death. She embodies the duality of creation and destruction, her allure and inspiration come at a steep price. As a figure tied to both the fairy world and the mortal realm, the Lenan side occupies an eerie space between muse and monster, her love both a blessing and a curse. Origins and Etymology The name Lenan side comes from the Irish Gaelic term Lianan side, which translates to fairy lover, or fairy mistress. The term Lianan means lover, and side refers to the fairy folk or the spirit world. In Irish folklore, the side are often depicted as a race of supernatural beings who dwell in a hidden realm, which is sometimes referred to as the Otherworld. The side are closely tied to nature, magic, and the liminal spaces between life and death. The Lenan side's role in folklore varies depending on the story and the region, but she is most commonly portrayed as a fairy or spirit who falls in love with a human, drawing them into her orbit. Her beauty and charm are irresistible and she often appears as a stunningly attractive woman, sometimes with long, flowing hair, ethereal features, and an aura of otherworldly grace. The Vampiric Nature of the Lenan Side At the heart of the Lenan Side's legend is her vampiric nature. Unlike the blood-draining, monstrous vampires found in later folklore, the Lenan Side is not solely concerned with drinking blood. Instead, she feeds off the life force or creative energy of her lovers. The Lenan side is said to bestow great artistic or intellectual inspiration upon her chosen lover, usually poets, artists, musicians, or other creative individuals, filling them with a surge of talent, passion, and genius. However, this gift comes with a deadly cost, the lover's vitality begins to fade as the fairy feeds off their life force. Over time, the lover becomes weaker, physically and mentally, as their strength and health are drained. The Lenan side, in many versions of the myth, is said to consume their soul slowly, often until the lover dies, leaving her heartbroken and bereft of her muse. In some stories, she is unable to stop herself, caught in the cycle of need and consumption. She is often depicted as mourning the inevitable death of the lover, even as she continues to seek new ones to sustain herself. This life-draining characteristic ties the Lenan side to the archetype of the vampire, a creature who feeds on the life force of others to prolong its own existence. However, while the traditional vampire is often a parasitic predator, the Lenan side is portrayed as a tragic figure, she does not necessarily seek to harm her lovers intentionally, but rather becomes trapped in a cycle of consuming the very energy that fuels her own existence. In some versions of the myth, the Lenan side is not only a vampiric entity but also a figure of seduction and obsession. The relationship between the Lenan side and her lovers is often portrayed as all-consuming, 
with the mortal man unable to escape her pull. She enchants him, and in return, he becomes devoted to her, often sacrificing his own well-being in the process. Her love is intense, passionate, and overpowering, but it is ultimately destructive. The role of the Lean Anne side in Irish and Scottish folklore. In Irish folklore, the Lean Anne side is frequently depicted as a figure of both awe and fear. She is a muse who inspires extraordinary works of art, but her inspiration comes at the price of her lover's life. This theme is especially poignant in tales involving poets and artists, where the Lean Anne side's relationship with her lover is intertwined with their creative process. These stories often reflect the complex nature of artistic creation, where inspiration can be a force that brings both brilliance and madness. One of the most notable aspects of the Lean Anne side's presence in folklore is her association with creativity and madness. The tale of the Lean Anne side serves as a cautionary one for artists and creatives, suggesting that while the pursuit of artistic greatness can be alluring, it may come at the cost of one's physical and emotional well-being. The Lean Anne side represents the temptation of genius, the intoxicating allure of creation, and the dangers of obsession. She is a symbol of the romantic ideal of the tortured artist, consumed by their craft and driven to the brink of madness. In many Irish stories, the Lean Anne side is described as a fairy woman who appears to a human, often in remote locations such as forests, hills, or other liminal spaces. These places, traditionally believed to be connected to the spirit world, are where the side dwell, and it is often in these spaces that the Lean Anne side makes her presence known. She may approach the mortal in the form of a beautiful woman, either appearing as a stranger or as someone the mortal already knows, and soon draws the individual into her web of enchantment. In some Scottish versions of the myth, the Lean Anne side is seen as an insatiable spirit who not only drains the life force of her lovers, but also becomes increasingly possessive and jealous. In these stories, the fairy might try to keep her lover away from other women, encouraging his isolation and deepening her control over him. She may also be blamed for the lover's decline in health, as he becomes a shell of his former self, slowly withering away under her influence. The Archetype of the Muse and Artist's Inspiration At the core of the Lean Anne side's mythology is the muse archetype, the otherworldly inspiration that drives artists and creatives to produce great works of art. In ancient and medieval mythologies, muses were often portrayed as goddesses or spirits who provided artists with the divine inspiration needed to create. The Lean Anne side, however, twists this idea by combining the muse with the dangerous, vampiric qualities that drain the artist's life energy. This duality of the Lean Anne side as both a muse and a predator encapsulates the creative process itself, where inspiration can be both a gift and a curse. Artists often speak of the intense drive and obsession that come with creativity, a force that propels them toward brilliance but also toward self-destruction. The Lean Anne side's role as a vampiric muse reflects this dynamic, suggesting that the price of artistic genius might be the sacrifice of one's health, soul, or even life. In these stories, the relationship between the artist and the muse is often depicted as unbalanced. While the artist is consumed by their need for inspiration, the muse is portrayed as similarly fixated on the artist, feeding off their creative energy. The result is a tragic cycle of mutual dependency, where the artist becomes addicted to the muse's presence, but it ultimately leads to their demise. The Lean Anne side as a symbol of love and desire. The Lean Anne side's relationship with her lovers is frequently portrayed as one of overwhelming passion and obsession. Her beauty and charm are irresistible, and once a mortal falls under her spell, he is often completely captivated by her. She represents the idea of an idealized lover, someone who fulfills the mortal's deepest desires and fantasies. However, this passion comes at a price. The Lean Anne side embodies the dangerous side of desire and love. In many versions of the myth, her relationship with her lovers is a tragic one, where the intensity of their connection ultimately leads to destruction. 
Her love is not selfish in the conventional sense, she does not intentionally seek to harm her lover, but her very nature compels her to consume the vitality of those she loves. In this way, the lean and side serves as a metaphor for destructive love, the kind that consumes and diminishes the lover over time. In some interpretations, the lean and side's vampiric nature is symbolic of the destructive power of desire, the idea that love, when unchecked or obsessive, can lead to ruin. This reflects the belief in certain cultures that excessive desire or passion, particularly when it becomes an obsession, can overwhelm the individual, leading to both physical and emotional depletion. Modern Interpretations and Legacy The myth of the lean and side has continued to captivate modern audiences, especially in literature, art, and popular culture. She has become an archetypal figure representing the dangerous allure of creativity and the relationship between life and art. In many contemporary works of fiction, the Lean An side is often reinterpreted as a vampiric figure, a seductive and mysterious entity who inspires both passion and madness in her victims. The Lean An side has appeared in a variety of modern horror stories, urban fantasy novels, and gothic literature, often taking on the role of a supernatural entity that seeks out artists or creatives. In these stories, she may be portrayed as a symbol of the tortured artist, drawing parallels between her draining influence and the artist's obsessive drive to create. In modern pagan and neo-pagan circles, the Lean An side has also found a place as a symbol of artistic inspiration, with some viewing her as a representation of the muse or the creative forces that drive individuals to achieve greatness. However, her more sinister qualities are not lost in these interpretations, as she still serves as a reminder of the dangers of overindulgence in one's passions and desires. Thanks for watching. Now that we've uncovered the darker side of fairies, it's clear that these mythical creatures are far more complex than their cheerful portrayals suggest. Whether they're mischievous tricksters or powerful entities with a mysterious agenda, fairies have a long history of both wonder and warning. If you enjoyed this deep dive into fairy folklore, don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe for more fascinating insights into the world of myths and legends. Have you encountered any eerie fairy tales? Share your thoughts below. Until next time, stay curious and beware of the hidden magic around us.